Do you trust me when I offer you advice? Do you trust that I love you? Do you trust that I want what's best for you? Do you trust me whenever I tell you that it's all going to be okay, regardless of what you see today, that it's all going to be okay? Do you trust me? Last night, Johnny did an incredible job kicking this thing off as we looked at this, this parable that Jesus tells, this foundational parable that, that Jesus tells about this, this farmer who represents God who goes out and, and he sows seed into a field. This seed, it, it represents the message of the kingdom of heaven, which I, I, I guarantee you, you're going to hear over and over and over and over again throughout this week. And Whenever Jesus told this story, he, he kind of gave us these four different soils, or I like to look them at actually as like four different um, places where, where, where your heart actually is. He, he said that some of the, the seed will, will fall on the path, and, and this is like the hard heart. This is the unreceptive heart. Then, then some of the seed will fall on, on rocky soil, and, and this I like to call it like the superficial heart. Like as long as everything is good, it's good. But as soon as things begin to go bad, everything seems to turn. You, you have the thorn, thorn, thorny soil, which I like to call the divided heart. Like, like your pursuit of Jesus is choked out by your pursuit of so many other things. Your pursuit of Jesus is secondary. Your allegiance to Jesus is secondary. It's not that you don't love Jesus. It's not that you don't care about Jesus. It's just that you love other things and you care about other things more. Then you have the good soil, and I like to call the good soil the kingdom worker heart that produces a, har a, a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times. But following that parable, that foundational parable, Jesus, he, he went on to compare the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds, and a little bit of yeast. And both of these things, they, they seem pretty insignificant in and of themselves, but, but eventually both of them grow into something that is so much greater. You, you end up seeing this great external growth, like, like in the mustard seed, this tiny seed that becomes this massive plant, and, and you end up seeing this internal growth, like this yeast that begins to work its way through an entire batch of dough. Both of them come from seemingly insignificant beginnings, but both of them end up making a massive, massive impact. So we've seen Jesus has talked about what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a mustard seed. It's like this yeast. And, and even how the, the kingdom of heaven is received with these four different types of, of heart. But today, today we are going to talk about how to properly respond to the kingdom of heaven in our own lives. Because Jesus' is broadcast it isn't just news about this kingdom, but it's an invitation to this kingdom, to join in the moving of this kingdom. So if you have a Bible today, you can go ahead and open up to Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read to you once again, verses 44 through 46. It says this, that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, he went and sold everything, and he bought that field if you have your bible underword the lines in his joy and then again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls and and when he had found one of great value he went away and sold everything and he bought it and so in this first story we see the story of a man who finds a treasure in a field and 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 that may sound strange to our ears however here's a true story my wife's grandpa um he doesn't really trust banks and so he has like stuffed Folgers coffee cans full of cash and just hidden them around his property. How cool is that, you know? But, but that, that, may not, that, that may not be super duper common in our day with banks and safety deposit boxes, but back in this day, that's exactly what people did whenever they had a, position, a, a possession that they, they, they believed was of great value. They went and they hid it in a remote place. And many believe that in this first story that Jesus is talking about a common man who is working for a wealthy man, plowing his field. And, and then whenever he comes upon this treasure in the field and, and realizing exactly what it is that he has stumbled upon, he was not looking for it, but what he has stumbled upon, he with joy left and with joy went and sold everything that he had so that way he could go back and buy the field. This is not a man of great wealth but a working man who found something that was worth losing everything for. 
And then the second story is of a man of great means. This is a man of great wealth. He, he's a merchant. He's a man who, who would go around and he would buy and he would sell. He was out looking for fine pearls. He didn't just come upon it, but, but he was actively pursuing it. And then, then one day he, he comes into the mother load, the finest of all pearls that he had ever seen. And, and so he immediately leaves and, and he too goes and sells everything that he has so he can go back and buy this fine pearl. So this man was a man of great wealth. But he too found something that was worth losing everything for. These stories, they're so, so similar. The first common theme that we see in the story is that, that both stories include the act of discovery. In one case, the act of discovery was intentional. In the other case, the act of discovery was unintentional. But in both cases, they came upon a treasure. So we have rich and we have poor. We have the wandering and we have the seeking. But both have found something that they believe is worth losing everything for. And Jesus is telling you, don't miss this. Jesus is telling you that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that you can discover. But once it's found, something must happen. You can't just walk by. You can't just walk by us. There, there, there has to be this sense of overwhelming joy at the discovery of the treasure. The first, the first parable even goes as far to say, I told you to underline it. Then in his joy... Notice this, that, that both stories highlight the joy of the men who have found the treasure, and it really doesn't even focus on the loss of everything they own. But the loss of everything that they own is also another thing that ties these stories together. Once again, you discover God's kingdom and you experience the joy of finding it. There has to be a response. And the response has to be this. We must die to ourselves both went and sold everything that they had and the accumulation of the stuff of their lives those presents that they had one day received with great joy those those purchases those purchases that they had saved months and months and months to be able to buy those those mementos that held so much sentimental value all of them everything was no longer worth anything and this is what dying to yourself looks like. This is the value of the kingdom of heaven because it is a treasure of such incomparable worth that nothing else matters compares in comparison to it. Now here's what I fear for so many of us who, who claim to be Jesus followers, for, for so many of us who, who claim to be walking in the ways of Jesus. I fear that instead of seeing the beauty and the value of this treasure that is the kingdom of heaven, that too often we just leave it buried in the field. We just keep walking by or we just keep shopping. We just keep looking around. Our agenda remains our agenda. If at some point it overlaps with the agenda with Jesus, then cool, you know, that's great, but, but that's not our goal. Our, 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 our dreams remain our dreams, and if someday our, our dreams overlap with the dreams that Jesus has for us, then, then, then that's cool, but I mean, that's not really our goal. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's just that if, if everything aligns, then, then that's great, but if not, it, it, it's oh well, oh well, because we, we feel like that we have to hold on to what's most dear. All the while, this, tr this treasure and this pearl of great value, it just sits there unappreciated and, and undervalued and, and unused. And, and our hope this week is, is not just to learn about the kingdom of God, but to learn about the supreme nature of the king. And what we see in both of these parables is that the king wants you to put his agenda first in your life. Why is this so important? Because the king loves you. Because the king values you. Because the king knows what's best for you. And the king longs to use you to build his kingdom. You know that people thought that these men were absolutely crazy. Why in the world would you go and sell everything you have? Can you imagine the conversations that are taking place around the neighborhood? As these men, they just go and they, they load their front yard just full of all of their stuff. But these men knew exactly what they were doing because both knew that they had found something worth losing everything for. Both those who were looking and those who just happened to stumble upon something great. The kingdom of heaven is something worth losing everything for. 
I want to tell you about some words that Jesus said to his disciples. And in Luke chapter 14, he said this beginning in verse 27. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying the person began to build but wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war with another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and ask them for terms of peace. In the same way, listen, those of you who do not give up everything, those of you who do not give up everything you have, you cannot be my disciples. So what about you this morning? There's so much more to come this week. We're just getting started, but what about you this morning do you believe do you like really really believe that the kingdom of heaven is something worth losing everything for if yes then do you live as though the kingdom of heaven is something worth losing everything for because i want to be honest with you i don't want to try and trick you into every anything the the kingdom of heaven it will cost you everything it means that, that, that you must surrender all of, of you to the will and the ways of Jesus. Listen, no longer is what you think is right automatically right. But instead now, what Jesus says is right is always and eternally right. No longer is what you believe to be true necessarily true. But instead, what Jesus says is true is eternally and faithfully true. Now, 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 what Jesus says is, is right and wrong is what's right and wrong in his wills and his desires and his version of right and wrong. They must, they have to sur- supersede your will and your desires and your vision of right and wrong as well. Don't miss this. The kingdom of heaven is so, so costly, but it is also so, so worth it. Whenever I read this parable, And I see the response that Jesus says is the proper response to the kingdom of heaven. I almost picture Jesus looking at his disciples, possibly even looking at you, and getting down on your level, getting down on his, you know, like, like this, looking you straight in the eye and saying these words, asking you this, do you trust me? Jesus is asking you today, do you trust me? Do you trust me with your life? Do you trust that Jesus is who Jesus says he is? Do you trust that he cares for you? Do you trust that he knows what's best for you? Do you trust that Jesus is Lord? Do you trust that Jesus can save you? And do you trust what Jesus said about the kingdom of heaven? Do you trust that the kingdom of heaven is something worth losing everything for? Do you trust that the kingdom of heaven is what Jesus says it is? If the answer to that question is yes, then today, church, you have found something worth losing everything for.